local boy, 21-year-old super featherweight Harry Escott from Sunderland, who's got British title aspirations. He's in against the experienced 29-year-old Brian Roach from Bay Cup. It's scheduled for six three-minute rounds. Second down for round one. So another look then at uh, the Sunderland favourite Harry Escott in, uh, in the white and a bit of a veteran there, the 29-year-old Brian Roach from uh, Baker, uh, Lancashire. This is the super featherweight limit. Nine, six and a half, nine, seven. Well, more like the, the lightweight limit, really. And the boxes these days are there, and their names on the trunks, all kinds of things. You've got Harry Boy on there, that's got well that always helps a, a commentator is not sure, but there you are, there's the, the shorts again. Brian Roach has, hasn't been around for a while. October 89 was his last one. He lost in two rounds to Hugh Ford, who then went on to win the championship and surprisingly to lose it. So just over a minute gone. Always gives them a run for their money, Brian Roach. Jim, you remember those great fights we saw? on uh, fight night that he's had uh, Carl Crook and Drew Black. He's, he's often in Nobbins fights. Yeah, now and again, Brian is in an untidy mood and he gets involved in a little bit of wrestling, but when he means business, he's very entertaining. And uh, in the first round here tonight, he's looking very sharp. He's, uh, he's just stalking young Escott, keeping him backed up, uh, trying to, to find a way in Escott. Nice and quick on his feet at the moment. This, this is one I've been looking forward to. It's a good little match. I hope it lives up to it. Actually, that Escott, he was hoping for a championship fight against the new champion now, Kevin Pritchard. Uh, but the Boxing Board of Control denied Pritchard a voluntary defence. Now, that's exactly what Roach is very, very good at. A little quick counter. He's very good at slipping the lead. Then he goes again twice in the turn and he's caught bang on. Red. A dangerous little opponent there for Harry Escott. Escott is going to have to step back out of distance. He's leaning back and not leaning back far enough. Well, it was a uh, get-on-the-bike opening round there for Harry Escott. Right. Second round. Round two. Second, second round. Scheduled for six. And the referee, Jerry Watson from Sunderland. Stand there looks unreasonable. He's a real schoolmaster type, isn't he? Doing a good stalking job here, Roach. Yeah, well, it, it gets quite a difficult little fella to catch with punches. He moves very fast, he throws little quick counters. Roach obviously knows all about him, so he's trying to force him in to make mistakes. He's showing a little feint, backing him up, and just waiting for the for his chance, but a couple of the right hand uh, counters he threw in the first round, very sharp, and they uh, landed both of them bang on. When they've been out a long time like that, as Roach did, what sort of reaction is it when you get back in the ring there? I mean, is it the timing or the fitness? 
Well, 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 I think uh, too much is made out of layoffs. Uh, sometimes a layoff will do you a little bit of good, you know, come back with an appetite. As long as you've had plenty of half decent sparring in the gymnasium, uh, there's no reason that it should take you too long to get back into the groove again. I know there's nothing like competitive boxing, but good sparring. And uh, if you get yourself mentally psyched up before the fight, then, and having said that, Roach certainly looks sharp enough here. second and that's the last thing really that Escott wants is a, a rough and tumble close in like that see Roach is far more experienced than, than the amount of fights would suggest the way he walks the square across Escott backs him into a corner a good little technique he has and uh, Escott wants to be nice and careful uh, just at the beginning of the fight try and get his long punches going see a bit of blood coming from Escott's left eye because yeah, doesn't gonna have a look at that. Edge. The referee just uh, didn't seem very bad to him, but he did the right thing. Good, good shot there, that left hook, and didn't the crowd know it? Still a little bit guilty when an opponent comes close. It's an automatic reaction to grab hold of, but he's doing it now. And there's uh, Jack Trickett on the outside of the ropes there. Second Managing down. him. Round three. And we're out for the third round of this super featherweight, virtually lightweight really, between Harry Escott in white and uh, Brian Roach. And that's been the pattern so far, having to move around the ring like that. Because uh, Escott has tumbled, he's 21 against Roach, he's 29. The old warrior knows a trick or two, he's been in with a couple of champions, he lost to Mo Huzain for the Commonwealth title, and it's getting very rough in there. With, oh, as I as I said it, I mean, that was blatant. And quite right, Jerry Watson is uh, reminding him he's got to behave himself, otherwise he might lose two points. It's a pity, really, Jim, because no need for that. It's been a good contest yeah, so Yeah, that, that, that was a little bit blatant, Reg. I mean, that was uh, obviously intentional and uh, not even clever, if you like. But the escort is still throwing long, loose punches, and that's exactly what Roach wants him to do. I think escort would be better advised to move a little bit closer to Roach and throw shorter punches. Roach is very good at slipping punches and coming back with counters. So Escott wants to get close as he's doing now. Roach is not so effective up close. You can see even now he's trying to grab hold. He keeps walking into that punch. It's, it's almost as though he wanted to go down for a second there. He probably caught him in the eye, I think. Well, actually, Roach is very good at delivering these kind of punches. You see, he's intimidating Escott. He's got him again, Reg. Got well, him again. He showed a left hook. He's nailed him with the right, and he's not going to make that, I don't think. No, he won't make that. His, his legs went on him, and he just didn't want to know anyway, and he really is out. So, in the third round, that surprised me, because I would have thought, with a minute to go in that round, the, uh, the local, or virtually local, Sunderland man, favourite to win, but Brian Roach did it in style, and he's come back almost in the third round. Roach all the way through has been stalking him, backing him up, putting him into positions, and he got him to overstretch himself, and bang, over it went once again, and that was obviously the finish, a lovely punch, and lovely technique from Brian Roach. Well, that was a terrific punch, wasn't it? Here's another big puncher now, Paul Charters, the light welterweight from North.